Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So we've just created our um, our constant here. And let's see if things work. Now, right now, things will not work, of course. So let me try and refresh my page. So refresh, and we get nothing. So nothing is added. If I click here, nothing works. And if I inspect the element, of course, in the console, I will find a few errors. So the first error here is just saying uh, reference error. The reference error means it's trying to find something, uh, you're referencing something that either does not exist or it's in a different type. So here we say reference error, student learn input is not defined. So it just means it couldn't find this variable and rightly so because we removed it. So let's fix those errors first. And the result. Now, if you're using a separate file, the JavaScript file, it would be easy for we we'll just click here and then it will show us exactly the line that has an error. But it's very difficult when we combine HTML and so on. So that's why it is a good idea to shift this to a, a separate JavaScript file. But I find that it, it can be annoying because uh, browsers are notorious for caching JS files. So you find that you edit your JavaScript file and you don't see the result and you can get frustrated. So I prefer to work directly in the file like this and then move the code to another file after. So what we'll do is let's close this. We already know what the errors are, so no need to deal with this. So first of all, when we are loading the page, uh, something was supposed to happen right to load the content so where is that part that does this let's see uh, i actually do not know hmm interesting good okay so this should be in the handle result uh, function so let's go to our handle result function where are we here uh, yeah, using the search can speed things up drastically. Okay, so there we go. So there's a handle result. So after we load the page, we do some stuff here, which is right here. So for intended learners tab, it's right there. So for students learn section. So students learn, that's what we have. So here we are looking for students learn minimum inputs. Hmm. Alrighty then, let's start from there. Um, since it's for the intended learners tab, let me copy this and put it here. Hmm, wait a minute. Now, the thing here is this, <coughs> excuse me. This, <coughs> wow. Um, this is the thing that happens when we have the intended learners tab for the intended learners tab. So it only makes sense to put this inside the intended learners uh, constant, all of this here. So what we would do is, let's do this. We say if tab is equal to intended learners, then we will grab, uh, we'll put one item here. I'm just going to, um, I'll just say intended learners because that's an object now which is available. I'll say dot load uh, inputs. That's what I'll call a function like this. So we're going to create a function called load inputs. And then this is where we're going to put all of this here. So I'm just going to cut everything from here. Okay, cut. And if it's intended learners, this is what we do. So cut there and do this. Okay, great. Now we can simplify this a whole lot better. I'll show you how to do that when instead of putting else statements for each individual tab, we can make it more automatic. But let's not complicate things for now. So we'll create a load inputs function. So let's go down to that load inputs uh, starting right here this is our constant so let's go to the end here 
tab action, blah, blah, blah. I can put it right here in the middle. So I'll say load uh, inputs is equal to a function. Oof, that's from uh, PHP site. Paste. Good. So we can see here, um, let's look at things we, we need to supply from there. And anyway, we'll see them from here. So for this tab, we're just going to say students learn. Let me grab this minimum input for all three like this. And then left, put a dot, delete the underscore. So this should solve the problem. Students learn. Oh, but we need to reference the entire object as well. So let me grab this intended learners. Copy. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't use the word this. It would be nice to just say this dot, you know, like we do in PHP. But we can actually do that, actually. There's this in here, but it, it will make things more complicated if we start using instances. Anyway, so intended learners dot students learn dot minimum inputs. Great, great, great. So everything should work. Let's see here, intended learners add new. So now we're referencing a function that's within uh, this intended learners section. So let's do a dot as well here. Uh, okay, not for that. Let me grab this. Then move that and put a dot there. So intended learners dot add new. Boom. Okay, so this should actually do the trick. So let's come back here and refresh. But it didn't, now it did it. So let's see what errors we have. So console.log. Okay, so there's a missing bracket. Where is this missing bracket? Okay. Okay. Ajax video abort. Where is this? Hmm. Oh, okay. So I didn't add a comma here, sorry. I didn't add a comma there. That could be it. Let's close this. Ah, there we go. So everything worked. So you see what happens when you don't add a comma between these items. Uh, JavaScript gets lost. Okay, so there we go. Things are working as intended. Let's try and add something new and see. Okay, so nothing is happening here when we click. Let's see what it's complaining about. Well, it's a reference error because it can't find this add new function, intended learners add new. So let's go and fix that, shall we? Now this is from the on-click listener on the buttons themselves. So let's go up here and find, oh, actually, these buttons uh, come from uh, these course tab thingies here. So let's do intended learners. So the references are coming from here. So it's like this one, intended learners add new. So let me find everything with intended learners underscore like that. And then put a dot like this. That alone should solve the problem. So intended learners dot add new. And yes, that should do it. So let's refresh. And let's add new. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now there's still the issue of deleting here. If I click, nothing will happen. We still have reference problems here. So if I go to the console, you see it can find that uh, thing. Now the thing here is we, so we have to look for all references and fix them. So come back here. Now this reference comes from the courses view tab. When we are adding content, which is like here. This is where we're making the references from on the on click listener because we have this move up. It does something. Uh, actually, there's an on click listener on the main thing, and then it checks to see what the ID is. So let's find that it's the tab action, I think. No, no. Is it? Is it though? No. So where is this? So one of these functions, ah, there, there it is. So when we add the on click list, now this is what we are sending. So let me copy all of this and put a dot instead like that. Okay, that should solve the 
problem. Okay, so let's refresh. Let's try a delete, and there we go. You can delete. Everything seems to be working fine. Let's try and move things up. So that works. Let's add a new item. That works. Let's try and move it up. <coughs> that works. Let's try a drag and drop. That works. Okay, so things seem to be up and up. Very cool. Let's add one more, two more, maybe. Let's move that up. Bam. Okay, so things are working and they're more organized. So this is uh, super cool. Now we can go ahead and delete the code that we have muted. So it's useless now. So let's grab this up to here and delete. Okay, good, good, good. Very cool, super cool. So we can now just copy this and duplicate it for con uh, consequent tabs because it already has the structure uh, that we want and we can reuse that. Uh, what else? So this remaining, the re remainder of the code is in the global scope. It's not inside an object, but if you want, you can also put this inside an object. So it's like one item and you can always copy and paste it elsewhere if you want. That keeps things a little bit more organized. Now, when we create other tabs here and we have, we're going to have other objects that are, that will have load inputs as well uh, for different tabs. So what we will do in that case is we're going to say if tab is equal to intended learners, uh, we will run this function here, no problem. Then we can do an else statement like this. And in this one, we'll put another if statement. So let me copy this. We'll say else if tab is equal to some other tab. Let's see what other tabs we have here. Maybe let's say curriculum, for example. Okay, so we can put curriculum. I'm missing something. An L, I think. Nope, actually it's double R, so I am correct. Okay, so here we'll have this like so. Let me grab this and put that here. We're going to have another object called curriculum and it will be like this, load inputs. So we'll keep adding these guys to this. So every time we add a new tab, we have to add the load input here so it can load those inputs when we click the tab. Now, if you have two or three tabs, that's okay. But if you have many tabs, then it becomes cumbersome and you have to remember to come back and add something here. Now, instead, what we could do, instead of having to do this, you see, uh, we already have the tab name, which is intended learners, which is exactly similar to the object name that we are dealing with. Just like here, we have curriculum, similar to the object name that we are going to create. So instead, what we can do is this. So let's do a console.log here. Okay. So that we have, we don't even, we won't even need the if statement. We just run one item here and that'll be it. So I want console.log to be equal to tab so that we know what we have here. So I'm just going to inspect for the console, refresh. And then I have this intended learners, right? But then you notice that on our objects, we have underscores and not these dashes. So what we'll do is I'm just going to say dot replace. Now you may have several dashes in there. So let's do replace all so that we replace all the dashes. So we're going to do dash replace with an underscore like that. Okay. So let's do a console log of that replacement and see what we have. And so we have intended learners, which looks exactly like this one. And so if it was curriculum, it doesn't have these dashes, so it will still come back to this. So as you can see now, we can have a variable that we can just append dot load inputs to it. So I'll do this first of all, then I'll say var, and I'll say, uh, what will I call it? OBJ, I'll just call it OBJ is equal to. Okay, let me remove this and that. 
And then here I'll do a console.log of obj, what the object name is, and I, I expect to see exactly that. Okay, which is what I see. Cool. So I have that. Now the problem is, how do I call it? Since it's object like this, it's actually a string. Now, if I try to do this, let me duplicate this and mute one of these. Maybe, the, oops, what have I done? What have I done? Me undo. Okay, so I want to replace this because I know the contents of this is what is inside the obj with obj. That way, if the value is curriculum, it would be curriculum.load inputs. If it's a, if obj is equal to intended learners, it would be intended learners dot this. Now, the only problem here is that I'm trying to put a dot load object inputs on a string. So it's going to see this as just this string here, which has some text, and then I'm trying to dot a function that does not exist. So this will obviously cause an error, but let's see that error. It says object.load of uh, inputs is not a function correctly so so we need a way to actually access the object that is contained as the string because this one is just a string but we want it to run the object that is named after that string so one way to do that is to look inside the window because remember that i told you that every uh, item we create is located in the window uh, global variable. So if I say window and then I can do dot obj again because if I do that it will try to find uh, an item named obj inside the window object and this does not exist. What exists in the window is this. So I need to tell it that to get you need to get the the string itself and think of it as the item it's finding. So instead of a dot, we'll use this as if we are accessing an array item. So let me grab this and let's put that there. All right, then. Okay, so we're doing a window and then grab whatever is in that, evaluate that, and then try to. So this is the same as doing this. It's the same as doing, let me copy this and put that there like so. It's exactly the same as doing this, only that we're putting this variable because we don't know what the text will be. We just want whatever the text is to run that. Okay, so let's do that. And let's see if that works, which I doubt it will work. And it doesn't work. It says window.obj is undefined. Well, but why? So the question is, why is it not found? So let's do a console.log of window and see what window doth contain because window should contain this constant we created here where is this this one right there okay so there we are we have window but let's check inside it let's enlarge this so there's window and as i can see nothing we are on s but we are looking for i and nothing. So it does, it really does not exist. But why? Wait a second. If I change that to var instead of const, let's try this again. Let's click. Uh, let's see. Do we have it? Looky there. There's intended learners, our object with all the functions that we need. And there's load inputs right there. So why is it that when I use var, I can see it when I use const, I can't. So this is a trade-off you, you have to create. If you use const like this, const is like a, it's the same with let like this. This is a, a temporal, I would call it a temporal variable, right? It only works in a specific scope. It's not global, in other words. So... That's why they say when you use let and when you use const, you are saving on memory. Uh, it's because those variables are temporal. They are not in the global scope, which lasts forever. They're only there when you need to use them and then they can be discarded in case there's shortage of memory or something like that until they are needed. So if we say const like this, it's not stored in the global scope at all. 
but if we use var then it is stored in there but i think we can use var because this is an important part of the operation here so let's leave it with var here and come back at the top there uh, technicality here let's come back yeah so if i remove this and now all i have is window dot that this should work this time i hope uh hopefully let's refresh see if we get any errors we don't get any errors and as you can see things have worked as intended now the beauty of this is that we don't need this if statement anymore i can just remove do stuff after tab is loaded that's great let's remove all of this okay here i'll just say obj name so that it's more descriptive of what we are doing and then i can remove this so we don't need this intended learners load inputs whatever objects will come here will be replaced there so no need for an if statement no need to add new code this is a cleaner way of doing things because it's scalable so whenever i add a new tab i don't need to come back here and add some more code because when you have too many places to add code you increase the uh, uh, the likelihood of getting errors so load tab content is loaded do some stuff after the tab is loaded quite right so let's come back here and refresh and there we go things are working as intended uh, things should work yes very good okay great now we can see how to save and edit information from here.